For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney and we're here in the Parallel Wireless booth at Mobile World Congress with Rajesh Mishra to catch up with uh, all of the exciting news that you guys have put out. So first and foremost, Rajesh, thank you for having us and congratulations on not only the Aegis Graham Bell Awards you recently won, but the announcement you made with Telefonica in Latin America. Well, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's actually we were honored to get that award. It actually shows the in fundamental innovation we are doing in this community, trying to make the cellular affordable to the ma masses. And it's not something you know you can do easily. We have innovated levels. So thank you, and uh, our partnership with Telefonica actually proves out that. And then, you know what, there's a map that's here in your booth that shows all of the deployments that you have around the world, and you're on all six continents. I'm just curious, what is helping you drive so successfully into these variable markets? Yeah, actually, it's uh, really simple from our perspective. We want to lower the total cost of ownership. So when you lower the total cost of ownership, you have to innovate. And what you innovate is, for example, in certain places, the power is really valuable, you know, uh, electricity is very expensive, unlike the US where it's relatively cheaper. So if you innovate where your equipment is really low cost from power consumption perspective, that's great. And what's that's great there is actually, of course, that's great in other places too. Right? So also in our backhaul solutions, we innovated where uh, we allow meshing so that you are not actually stuck with a fiber everywhere. You can actually daisy chain our equipment and bring a low cost, uh, whether it's in man or life, or uh, mesh, or fiber, or ethernet, or satellite. So our, our flexibility allows us to actually be anywhere in the world. And these deployments are actually the point that we are so flexible because we cover such a wide footprint in terms of the transport to the site to the total cost of ownership. And that's, I think, a great point. And maybe let's use India as an example. That is an incredibly challenging telecoms market given the uh, ARPU, the competition between the carriers, and then the geography. But yeah, you all have yeah. been quite successful there. Yes, uh, and again, uh, you know, you have to really look at the total cost of ownership. And I can't stress this and that enough because electricity is very expensive in India. You know, I originally grew up in India. So, uh, you know, you can't afford, you know, you can innovate many fronts, but for example, you can't afford dark fibers in India because uh, it's, the infrastructure is very expensive. You can't afford the server farms in India because air conditioning is very, very expensive. So you have to have a solution that's out there doesn't require a lot of electricity, no air conditioning, right? A lot of times actually people forget they only go for the technology buzzword, right? And forget there is actually a cost to pay which only the operator knows, not the technologist know, right? If you virtualize everything into the server farm and you're running a huge data centers, you know you don't actually incorporate the air conditioning or the rental as a kind of cost of ownership operator does, right? And when they add up these, they have become so expensive, right? So our virtual RAM solution takes care of all these things where you're not actually, it's the best of both worlds, really, right? Because we have a very powerful BBU into our base stations, we can be either the edge-centric or the data center-centric or anywhere in between, right? That, that kind of the flexibility that we can do compared to you know, some of the other cloud-centric solutions which are very expensive when you kind of look beyond the technology. And that's really what allowed us to be very successful in India. And again, our meshing backhaul is another example. We had to innovate on the meshing because we wanted to take down the total cost of ownership. The majority of the radio companies don't look into that, but for us, we want to take down every single expensive part of the ecosystem. So, so that, that's really why we innovated on meshing, and that is again a very powerful tool for dense con uh, countries like India, where uh, you can daisy chain these base stations without bringing a backhaul everywhere. So Rajesh, another aspect of this low total cost of ownership, obviously that's good economics for an operator, but it really does allow you to bridge this digital divide and connect the unconnected. 
you guys have had a lot of success in Africa, which is the least connected continent on Earth. How's it going in that market? Same thing, actually. You'll be surprised how much they pay for the equipment. You know, it's kind of unfortunate when, you know, people in Africa are paying more for the equipment than other places. You know, it's just sad. So when we looked at that market, again, if you step back and look at the total cost of ownership, it's very simple. Right? Trying to come up with a low-cost solution, but not a low-quality solution. Our solution is the world's best radio, what you're looking at, the smallest compactor, and they are macro grade, uh, you're looking at 2 by 20 watt, 2 by 40 watt, 2 by 5 watt solution, like these are the world's smallest. So when you actually step back and try to put the quality solutions together, you'll find most often the cost is not in the equipment, the cost is again in many other things, including the transport, including the integration, including the deployment. So we, when we innovate as a total cost of ownership centric approaches, actually our deployment in Africa was really seamless. It was really easy because we were able to leverage the backhauls, the meshing to digitize the units and any kind of backhauls. And what happens with our clustered mesh centric approach, all these backhauls actually work together. So I'm not requiring a one very high quality backhaul. I can have a many low quality backhauls and work together and do a network slicing amongst them to take advantage of as a collective nature of this uh, backhauls using our mesh fabric to bring it back to the whole uh, which is our gateway. So we are actually able to do that. And again, you will hear many times people talking about like network slicing or virtualization or SDR, right? in a buzzword centric way, we try to actually bring it down to the real end user where you're actually impacting lives of people. You know, when people don't have connectivity, we just got an email a few days ago from a community which we lit up at 3G4G. You know, it's, it was very touching, right? Where when someone says that they couldn't sell a house because there was no power system, which is very real. And for three years, when we lit up our sites, they were able to sell the house in months, right? And the new owner is working from home business, right? So those are kind of the things we are able to do, where we are able to touch lives uh, of people you know, by connecting them and again taking advantage of these technologies, trying to you know make real changes versus you know just solving the technology problem for technology sake. Well, you guys have already made uh, quite a difference and the success that you've had is just uh, inspiring, I think, both from the market penetration and the way that it's enabling the end user. And 2018, already off to a running start. What's next for Parallel Wireless? Well, uh, we just want to you know, keep going, really. Uh, it's very simple. We want to actually take this industry to the next level. We have been actually innovating on virtualization. When the industry was talking about centralization, we were actually talking about virtualization. And we want to actually continue to innovate and drive down the cost. And uh, you know, we are working on not only the rural side of it, but also the in-building, the dense urban, the public safety. It's just, uh, you know, we want to continue to keep making the same progress we have done in the past. And again, thanks to our team and supporters, really, and our operator partners who believe in us to do that, and we are executing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to catch us up on all the exciting news coming out of Parallel Wireless Recession. Thank you for having me.